In this video, I'm going to tell you about a new way to build a robot. A way that's easier than any other way you've ever seen. You can control a robot like this one. It's small, and it's powered by DC motors, as you can see here. Robots need more than motors, though. They also need sensors. This small robot uses this infrared sensor. In fact, it uses six of them spaced around its perimeter. Here's a different robot you might want to build. This small robot uses different kinds of sensors and different motors. Instead of DC motors, this robot is powered by continuous rotation servo motors. For sensors, it uses five of these infrared digital sensors around its perimeter. It also uses a ping ranging sensor using ultrasonics to measure distance in front of the robot. This ping sensor is mounted on a rotating turret. Maybe you're not interested in small robots at all. Here's a man-sized robot, about six feet tall. It also includes an arm. The arm is mounted in the base of the robot, folds up inside when not in use, can reach down to the floor and up to a table or kitchen counter. The man-sized robot uses Max Botics ultrasonic sensors, totally different than the pings. Six of these are mounted around the perimeter of the man-sized robot. Some of these robots have line sensors mounted underneath them. All of them have an electronic compass that allows them to measure their orientation. All of these robots are controlled by one chip, the Robot Basic Robot Operating System. This one chip handles all the low-level controls and communicates with Robot Basic running on a PC over a wireless or even a wired link if you would prefer. The motors on the small DC robot take less than an amp, so they can be driven directly from the ROS chip. The servo motors used on this robot are also driven directly from the ROS chip. The man-sized robot needs much larger motors, too large to be driven by the small ROS chip. In those cases, we have a solution. When large motors are needed, the ROS chip can talk to a RoboClaw and drive motors up to 30 amps each. The ROS chip can handle all these types of motors, but it can also handle all these types of sensors, infrared, ultrasonic, digital, analog, compasses, line detectors, beacons, and more. What if we could control all these robots with a single program, like the one you see here? Notice we've got the variable real set to false. If we run it like that, this program, which finds a wall and follows a wall, of course we have to write those subroutines, but those have been done and I can show you those later. But this program, when real is false and we run it, then this program has a simulated robot, find a wall and follow it. You can use the simulator to develop your algorithms, work on your behaviors, Figure out how to make the robot do things before you try to do everything with a real robot. If we take this program and change false to true, then this same program can control real robots. It can control a RoboClaw robot, a very large robot, or the small DC robot that we saw, or even a servo-powered robot using any of the sensors we saw. Let's look at each of these robots in action being controlled by this same program. This is the DC motor robot. It's being controlled by exactly the same program that controlled the simulation. It's using its sensors to follow this wall, 
just like the simulation did. This is the servo motor robot using the exact same program to control it over a Bluetooth wireless link as we have with all the other robots. It too follows around the corner Now here's the man-sized robot, moving away from the wall to find its distance. Remember, every one of these programs, no matter every one of these robots, no matter what sensors they use, what ro what motors they use, they're all controlled by one single ROS chip being run from Robot Basic. This chip can do unbelievable things for you, and it makes building a robot programming a robot easier than ever before. Of course, this wall following example that we have is just that, an example. You can use Robot Basic to program your robot to do almost anything you want it to do. There's lots of information on our webpage that explains how to use it in many, many ways. Just as another example, remember this large man-sized robot had a robot arm. Let's take a look at how we can use the Robot Basic robot operating system to control that arm over the same radio link. Here's the arm. This is one that we made, but the robot operating system can control any arm that uses servo motors. Our robot operating system manual shows exactly how we made this arm, as well as how we made all of our robots. You can have all sorts of sensors on the fingers and the joints of the arm, just as you can have sensors on the robot itself. Now the robot arm will fold back into the body. You can get a free manual. Just go to robotbasic.com, click on the ROS tab, the Robot Basic Robot Operating System tab, and download the free PDF manual. There's also lots of information there if you just want to do a quick read. In fact, while you're there, download your free copy of Robot Basic. Robot Basic is free, and there's lots of information on the web page to show you how we can do all sorts of things with Robot Basic and the Robot Operating System.